Okay, so today is Monday, uh, November 16th, and today we're, we're going to pick up on what we were doing on Markov chains and ergodic Markov chains, and then we're going to sort of back up and go to hidden Markov models. I'm doing them in sort of backwards order because I just felt like it that way. I think it's, there's something really elegant about ergodic Markov chains, so I like to do them, and then you can see how they're used in an application. But, uh, so, so the idea of a Markov chain is this, that each, each new state, so this is like x0, x1, x2, each new state is dependent upon the previous one. So in this kind of diagram, this is time, okay? Um, now, uh, so the probability, so tau m is equal to the probability that uh, x0 is equal to m. So that's a probability density function for uh, the first state, okay? That's like the initial condition. Uh, and then um, the probability of uh, ij is equal to the probability that xn equals uh, j, given that xn equals, xn minus 1 equals i. Okay. So, so that's fine. So this is a homogeneous. Markov chain. It's homogeneous because P i j is not, a, the transition probabilities are not a function of time. Okay. So a different way of thinking about this, okay, is so this is sort of time, but there's a different way of thinking about Markov chains that people commonly use to talk about them, and in which case you talk about state. So you have, and this only works for homogeneous Markov chains. So you have like, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. And then like this would be P0, 5. And this is P0, 1. This is P0, 2. P0, 3. These all have arrows. This is P three zero. Okay, does that make sense? This is P two zero. This is going to get uh, messy. This is P one zero. This is P five zero. Then you have. P15, P51, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, it may be that you can get, it may be that the state transition matrix is dense, in which case there's a non-zero value for each transition probability, or it may be that it's sparse, in which case maybe some of the edges are missing, like in this diagram I just drew here, right? Well, you can drive it and draw it this way, okay? And then the question is, if you run this, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, the probability distribution for pi uh, 1 n is equal to sum over, um, I'll make this j, sum over i equals 0 to m minus 1. Uh, this will be tau i p i j, right? So the way we write that is pi 1 is equal to tau times p, okay? And pi 2 is equal to tau times p squared, right? right. And pi 3 is equal to tau times 
HP cubed, right? And so forth and so on, right? And then pi infinity is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of tau times p to the n, which is equal to tau times the limit as n goes to infinity of p to the n is equal to tau times p infinity. Right? Does that make sense? Do you believe that? Does it all seem logical and clear? Okay? So that's fine. So the question is, does this p take a limit? Okay? If the limit exists, there's uh, different things that can happen, actually. Um, it may be that the limit doesn't exist. So that if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, it doesn't converge to anything, okay? That's one thing that can happen. Another thing that can happen is that if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, um, it converges, but the different rows of p infinity are different. Now you might say, well, I told, you told me that they're all the same. No, I didn't tell you that. What I told you was that they're all the same if it reaches an ergodic distribution independent of the initial state. But it might be that, well, it could be that it just doesn't reach an ergodic distribution, but it could be that the, it, it reaches a stationary distribution, but, it's, but the stationary distribution it reaches depends on the initial state. So you'd be like, well, how does that happen? Well, we'll see. It, happens, it can happen if the states are disconnected. Okay, so then it doesn't ma it matters which state you start in because it's like, it's like, uh, what's in that uh, island off Australia with the, uh, what is it called? New Zealand. Uh, that is an island off of Australia, but it's not the one I was thinking of. No, it's the one, the Galapagos Islands, mm -hmm. where you have these like unusual life forms, because they're like their own stationary Markov chain, right? Because they never intermixed with the life forms on the other, con what, uh, the really big islands we call continents, because because you couldn't get across the water, okay, unless you're maybe a bird. So, so that's going to happen. You have different islands of states, okay, that don't interact. Okay. So now, okay, so, so okay, so that's that. Okay, now, so the, the it, now how, so how do we know if the, um, so how do we know if the, uh, if the thing reaches an ergodic distribution, okay? Well, uh, there's, okay, well, first of all, just from an intuitive standpoint, we would sort of expect that it should converge to some stationary distribution, okay? It seems to make sense. And then, you know, you say, well, it's gotta work. You say, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the famous last words. What could possibly go wrong? Well, there's three things can go wrong, okay? You might expect expect that the limit as n goes to infinity of p to the n equals pi infinity. Okay. Uh, with um, uh, uh, so that so that uh, or you might expect that let, let's well let me re say this a little more compactly that um, x n reaches the same. Uh, stationary distribution f 
for all x0 equal m, OK? OK? Then it would be called ergodic. However, three things can go wrong. OK, what are the three things? There's three things that can go wrong. OK. Um, uh, OK, the first thing is that um, uh, it can become become trapped in disconnected states. OK? The second thing is that uh, it can be a clock. And the third thing is uh, it can dissipate Is that how you spell dissipate? Is there two S's in dissipate? Yeah. Okay, dissipate to infinity. OK. So let's see what that means. So there's three things that can go wrong. OK, the first thing is this. I'm at, so you have, you have, um, this is zero. Yeah, I'm going to throw the state diagram. I'll also put here case one. OK. You have a state diagram like this. Zero, one, two, three. OK. So this is P10. This is P01. This is P23. <sighs> I should have left myself some more space. This is P23. And this is P32. OK? So if I start in state, and then the, these, the other transitions, P13 are 0. OK? So if you look at the state transition matrix, it would look like this. It's P, uh, this is P01. This is 1 minus P01. This is 0, 0. This is P. 1, 0. This is 1 minus P, 1, 0. And this is 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. This is uh, P, uh, what, 2, 3. This is P, 3, 2. And this is 1 minus P, 3, 2. And 1 minus P, 2, 3. So it it's, has a block structure. And, and you can't get from this group of states to that group of states and back and, back and forth, OK? In this case, it doesn't matter how many times I run the iteration. I can't get between the states, OK? So this is an example of it. It gets trapped in, it, so in this case, it's not ergodic, at least not in the sense that I stated, because it, it, I have to, I've imposed it in the definition that the asymptotic distribution is not a function in the initial state, okay? So here it is a function in the initial state. 
Yeah. Are these purely mathematical constraints of the model, or do they occur in actual physical systems? Oh, yeah, they definitely occur in actual physical systems. So I gave you an example of them. Well, I mean, if, you know, it's always a model, right? Yeah. So, but definitely occur in terms of reasonable models of physical systems. Like the example I gave you of the animals on the island, on the Galapagos okay, Islands, right? If you're going to set up a Markov chain for the evolution of those animals, because it presumably is a Markov chain, right? Um, then, of course, it's not discrete time, but that's so. Um, then it would have to be like this, right? Or uh, what, what isn't so obvious is that, um, I mean, the, I, I organized this so you can see the block structure here. But if you, if you take the states and you randomize them, it may not be obvious whether they're disconnected. Because you would have, I mean, because, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you can, it's not super hard to figure out. But it may not be totally obvious, OK? And, um, and there also can be things called transient states, which are states that you never, there's things called transient states and absorbing states, too. Transient states are states that you would never, asymptotically, you'll leave and never return to. And uh, absorbing states are states that once you enter, you never leave. So if there's any absorbing state, if you, well, if there's any absorbing states, then you know, like absorbing state. A good example of an absorbing state is when the nuclear power plant blows up. So that once it enters that state, <laughs> you know, it's not going to reverse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a very graphical one. Okay, I'm sorry, didn't mean to hurt your feelings or anything. But it's like cooking an egg, you know, a high entropy event. Okay, so um, you can't uncook it, right? So, but but. Uh, now, uh, okay, so I'll talk about the theory how to fix this in a moment. But I first want to go over the intuition behind the, the things that can go wrong. You can take a whole course, or at least they used to teach whole courses. I don't know if they do anymore. I don't know, sort of things. I mean, it's not like there's any less interesting stuff, but, but uh, you can take, well, I'm sure there must be courses in the stat department and the math department on re, re, uh, Recurrent processes and Markov chains, because you could teach like three courses on this stuff. Okay, it it goes into enormous depth, but but the basic idea is that is this. Okay, and, oh by the way, this is also very. So you might think, well, who cares about this? Um, but um, okay, this is very much uh, this is this is central to like if you're trading on Wall Street. Okay these ideas, because you model things as Markov chains. There's these things called, um, uh, they're not called, OK, my memory's horrible. What are they called? Uh, they're called, uh, uh, OK, the times between events are we called the um, uh, recur recurrent intervals. Oh, gosh, my memory is terrible. OK, anyway, so use often the case is that um, you, one of the things you're looking at is not just Markov chains, but the times between when events occur in the Markov chain. So a good example is stopping time rules. And stopping time rules show up in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in what you might call gambling, but really in like you know investment, OK? So you might say, oh, I'm going to set a threshold, all right? And when I exceed that threshold, I'll sell the stock, OK? Or when I go below that threshold, I'll buy the stock, OK? By the way, the key to business is remember this, OK? It's really crucial. If you remember this, you'll do well in your stock investments. Buy low and sell high, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a simple rule, right? But most people I know are much better at buying high and selling low, okay? Okay, so, okay, just remember that. Buy low, sell high, okay? So, 
you set a threshold, when you go below it, you buy, and when you go above it, you sell, okay? So you say, well, what's the probability I'm going to hit that threshold? What's the distribution in time for the <laughs> exceeding that threshold? And the random processes that describe that kind of thing are called martingales, okay? A martingale is a continuous, it, it could be a continuous, usually it's a continuous time random process. Okay, I can't stop myself. I have to tell you this because it's just too interesting. And then, of course, I won't be able to really talk about it, but that's okay because at least you'll know it exists, okay? But, so if you have a random process like x of t, okay, and the expected value, so you have, okay, let x of t, um, I don't know, be some, uh, be, uh, be uh, a four, uh, T, a member of R plus, be a random process Uh, and then, um, and then such that the expected value of x of t given x of tau such that for all t greater than tau. Oh, oh. Okay, I'll make it. It doesn't really matter. Um, uh, then, uh, So that's a martingale. I think that's how you spell martingale. So the expected value for all ta future times of the random process is equal to, if the conditional expectation of its future value is equal to its current value. It seems like a very simple thing, right? Like, these are super interesting and you can spend your lifetime studying them because this represents sort of a fair game, okay? So I can do something like, here's interesting. So um, let's say that, uh, um, let's say that I, I don't have a coin anymore. Nobody ever has coins anymore. Pretend I have a coin. It looks like this. You have a coin? Because it makes it more graphic. Okay, ma imagine I have a little coin here and I can flip, it, okay? Boom, okay, and it comes up heads or tail. So, Alessandro, I'll, I'll use you if you don't mind. Okay. Because it makes it more real. Okay, yeah. don't worry, you won't make or lose any money, so don't, don't worry, there's no risk, okay? So, imagine that I bet you a dollar, okay? Tails, I win, he uh, heads, you win, okay? So, okay. I flip the coin, okay, and you win, okay, or I win, say, okay. So let's say you win. So you win, so I'm like not happy because I really wanted to win and you won. So instead what I do is I say, okay, double or nothing, I'm gonna flip the coin again. Now, if, if you win this time, of course you get $2. But if I win, I get $2, okay, from you. I lost $1 and I gained two dollars, so I, my net gain was one dollar, correct? I can repeat that, okay? So if, we, if I lose again, so I've lost now two dollars, I double down again, okay? Four dollars, eight dollars, sixteen dollars, thirty-two dollars, sixty-four dollars, okay? Eventually, I'll win. I mean, you agree with that, right? Because the probability that I'm going to flip an infinite number of coins, which all come up heads, is zero. So with probability one, I eventually win. When I do win, I win exactly one dollar. Right? Let's go through it, okay? 
Because if I, if I win the first time, I get a dollar. If I win the second time, I lose a dollar, but I get two dollars back, so I can make a dollar. If I win the third time, I lose like uh, one dollar plus two dollars plus four dollars, no, one dollar plus two is three, and I get four back, so I get one. I mean, you just do the sequence, I won't do it, but if you do the sequence, it's gonna be two to the n minus one, but I get two to the n, so I'm gonna make one dollar. So with probability one, that I'm gonna win that game and make one dollar. I'm gonna make one dollar, right? Do you believe me, or am I just making it up? Okay, you guys got it, right? It's like, seems like a money-making machine, right? I, all I have to do is just keep finding people that are willing to do this stupid game with me. I can keep making one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, eventually. I mean, if that's too slow, instead of betting one dollar, I'll bet a million dollars, okay? And then I'll just keep doing that, okay? But what's the problem? I mean, it doesn't seem right. I mean, it's a fair game, right? Because the coin's fair. It goes back and forth. It can be either, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not an unfair coin. So the amount of time, so after n here is, uh, instead of making it t, we'll make it xn, is the number of times I bet you. So it turns out that it has, xn has the property, the, the expected value of xn given x, say, 0, is equal to x0, which in this case is 0, right? So the expected, re if I played, if I only played that game with you uh, like um, five times, okay, then the expected return would be 0 for sure. Because I'd have a, I mean, every time I double my bet, but every time I only have a 50 50 chance of winning, so my expected return is zero. Yet, if I pick this rule for when to stop, then if I pick t as t equals uh, first time I win, okay? then the expected value of xt given x0 is equal to 1. It seems impossible, at least to me. I don't know if it bothers you guys. Does it bother you guys? Does it bother you guys because the, it's a fair game, but if you let me choose the time I stop, I can guarantee that I'm going to make money. By the way, this is the same strategy people use when they go to casinos, right? Because they go, well, I'm just going to wait until I'm ahead and then I'll quit. <laughs> right? <laughs> so what's the problem with this strategy? I, it, uh, it terminates with probability one. And when it terminates, I make one dollar. But it's a fair game. Does everybody understand the problem? Yeah. But wait, it's a Markov chain. Mm -hmm. Because the total amount of money I won is dependent upon the amount of money I won last time plus this random new event. So that I can set that up as a Markov chain. So I'm still on at least, I plausibly can argue I'm still covering the course material, okay? Does anybody, okay, so would you do that? Are you going to run out and do this? No, why? Because T is unknown. Well, it's random. Like it's not unknown. It's when you, you stop, it, it's known. It's exactly a very precise rule. I keep playing the game until I win. I flip the coin. Did I win? No. Did I win? No. Did I win? No. Did I win? Yes. Okay, I stop. Okay. I, I, I keep flipping the coin until I win, okay? And uh, when I win, I walk away. And then I can repeat the game again and win another dollar. 
the investment cost is kind of high? The expected investment cost is infinite. <laughs> Actually, you can work it out. I'll let you do it, okay? You take, because uh, you know, uh, you can calculate the probability of termination for each n, right? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a one, it's, uh, yeah, I'll let you figure it out, okay? And you know how much you have to bet. So the problem is the expected, the expected bet is infinite. So as a practical matter, so, um, so people, so, uh, okay, so proof, there's a theorem which says that for any martingale with any stopping time, if the, if the expected bet and the expected time to, uh, by the way, the expected, in this problem, the expected value of t uh, is less than infinity. It's, it's actually, uh, what? It's going to be the sum from n to the probability uh, is 2 to the minus n, n equals 0 to infinity, something like that, which is, is definitely finite, right? So that's finite. I don't know what it is, but it's finite, okay? I could figure it out, but so that's equal to this. But the problem is uh, the sum from n equals 0 of 2 to the minus n times uh, uh, is 2 to the n is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to 0 to infinity of 1 is equal to infinity. And that's the, uh, that's the expected bet. That's the expected bet. So you need an infinite amount of money to play this game. Um, so this kind of, I don't know if they still have these things anymore. Do you know what that is? It's close, but it goes that way. And this is like a newly paved asphalt road. Steamroller. It's a steamroller, okay? They call this kind of betting strategy picking up nickels in front of a steamroller, right? So you make money, okay, because you pick up the nickels and you go, oh, nickel, 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 nickel. But every once in a while, the steamroller rolls you all over, okay? So actually, if you look at it, in financial markets, people will do schemes like this. They come up with these weird schemes. One of the most classic examples, okay, I'm not an expert in finance, so if, my, if I'm wrong, so be it, but I know I'm not wrong, is a company called Enron, okay, <laughs> that set up these financial Ponzi schemes, okay, where you make very small amounts of money, but with some probability, you lose billions, okay? <laughs> Okay, and when that happens, like then you're hosed. So you try to get a government bailout. But the thing is that, so it's interesting because you can study this mathematically with Markov chains. Okay, and they're called martingales. So I just and here's the thing that's interesting, that you really can't analyze this problem without a really um, a very uh, a theoretical f uh, machinery. Uh, from probability. Like, you can't get an answer. Oh, the, the proof. The proof is the, the theorem is that there's the, the theorem is that there's a theorem that says that for any, this is called the stopping time. For any stopping time, uh, uh, the ex, uh, okay, the expected return for any stopping time, which is, if the, okay, if you have a stopping time whose ex, who's expected time determination is, is, uh, is less than infinity, and such that the amount of banking, the bank money you have to put up is less than infinity, okay? The expected amount of bank money you have to put up is less than infinity. Then, then uh, this expectation always has to be zero. But proving that is hard. The proof's hard. So it's an example of where having all the theoretical machinery is useful, because you can't even formulate the problem 
I mean, the the prob the uh, the stopping time t is a random variable, but it's 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 really hard to put into mathematical. I mean, the words. I mean, some t's are 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 not valid, right? So if you have you have like a random process like this, okay, and if I can see the future, okay, then of course I'm going to say. I'll pick, I'll stop here, because I knew it's the peak. But, I, but if I can't see the future, then how would I know to stop there? So a lot of things you read in the financial markets, the people will say, well, uh, you know, they're, it's like money morning quarterback. You know how the game worked out, so you're already cheating. So the question is, well, what if I take the, my stopping time to be the local maximum? Well, somehow that seems like cheating. So I go, well, how, how is it cheating? You say, well, it's looking at the future. I'm like, well, what if I put a threshold here? If I put the threshold here, that one's looking at these values. So why is that not cheating? <laughs> so even specifying what it means to be a stopping time to be only dependent upon the past is, a, is sort of a very subtle thing that's hard to do, but you can do it. Uh, okay, that was a little bit of a detour, but I thought I'd like to tell you that because it does have some interesting life lessons. <clears throat> okay, um, so that's case one that can go wrong. Uh, martingales, and if it's a sub-martingale, like the stock market is a sub martingale because its expected value goes up with time, so it's not zero. Um, okay, it can be a clock. Case two. Uh, So in this case, you're in state zero, you go to state one. You state one, you state two. State one, it just goes around. This is not ergodic because it never reaches a steady state distribution in the sense that the distribution uh, at a particular time is never reaches a, st uh, okay. You, you, if you do like a time average, there's sort of a steady stateness, maybe you might argue. But it doesn't reach the steady state distribution like I spe uh, specified. In this case, the limit as n goes to infinity of p to the n just doesn't exist. Everybody knows what it means for a limit to exist, right, from calculus? And this doesn't exist because the thing just keeps going like this, so it never reaches a limit. Okay? And then case three. Which maybe I should have it's a little bit like my Martingale example, is this. In fact it is a Martingale. Um, I take uh, I take uh, um, B N uh, the probability of Bn is equal to m uh, is equal to one third um, if m equals one, one third if m equals minus one, and one third if m equals zero. Okay. And uh, then the expected value of bn is equal to zero, right? And the expected value of bn squared is equal to y. You should be able to do that in your head. 
So there's, two, there's three possibilities. Bn might be 1, 0, or minus 1, right? So if it's 1, what's the probability of that? What's the probability of it being 1? OK, so this is Bn, right? And Bn takes on three values. The three values are 1, minus 1, and 0, right? So what's the probability that it's equal to 1? 1 third. What's the probability that it's equal to minus 1? So, yeah, so it's going to be minus, it's going to be 1 squared times 1 third plus minus 1 squared times 1 third plus 0 squared times 1 third, right? That's the expected value. That's the expected value of the b squared, right? Because if b is one, it's one squared is one, minus one squared is one, and zero squared is what's zero squared? I just want to make sure anybody's here today. It's zero, right? So what's this? It's equal to two thirds. That's the variance of that random variable. Okay, and then. Xn is equal to the sum from n equals 0 from i equals 0 to n. Now, if n is 0, then I take that to mean that you don't add anything. Okay, so uh, times bn, bi, OK? So. Uh, case three. I can erase this because you know the three things that can go wrong. The three things that you can go wrong is that it's disconnected, it's a clock, or it dissipates to infinity. I'm working on three, which is that it dissipates to infinity. Okay. So Xn is a martingale. See? I didn't actually know when I was doing that that it would come up, but I may as well use it, OK? So then, because the expected value of xn given xm for n greater than m, greater than or equal, actually, is equal to y. It's going to be actually equal to xm. Maybe that's not obvious to you. Um, is that obvious to you? That's not obvious to you, is it? No, it's not obvious. OK, let me do it. So it's equal to the sum. It's equal to the expected value. Oh, let's just do it like this, because it's getting, going to get too complicated. Uh, the expected value of xn is equal to y is equal to the expected value of the sum from i equals 0 to n of um, bn is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n as the expected value of bn is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to n of what's the expected value of bn? It's 0. By the way, what is this? This is n. This is xn. What is this? It starts at 0, right? And then what happens at the first time? It goes up or down or something, OK? What happens to the second time? It goes up or down there, OK? It's a random walk, OK? This is a random walk, OK? If I made these Gaussian, then it would be like a, but I wanted to make a discrete state. It's a random walk. So the expected, so the expected value at any time in the future is 0. This is a martingale. But what's also true is that if you take some new point, and I think this is hopefully intuitively obvious, you're summing these things, right? So 
if you restart the whole thing, you're just restarting at some new value, but the entire thing's still the same as it was at zero. It's what's called independent increments. So it's, it's not a stationary random process, but its increments are stationary because the b's are stationary. It's not a stationary random process. Why? Well, because time zero is definitely different than the other times. And it's, the variance increases with time, so it can't be stationary. But it sort of feels stationary because, uh, OK, so what ends up happening is the expected value of xn, of xn, given xn, is equal to xm for n greater than or equal to m. This is like um, a fair, this is like a, um, it, it, you go into a casino, if the, if the, if the um, slot machines were fair, which they're not, then this would be your return from a slot machine with time, okay? What really happens with a slot machine is there's a drift down because it's always taking your money, okay? Right. So with the stock market, it's always returning money, so it's drift up. So, uh, okay, now the expected value of xn squared is y. Well, oh gosh, I'm adding a bunch of independent random variables. When I add independent random variables, what happens to the variance? If I add independent random variables, what happens to their variance? What happens to their mean? The mean adds. Do you want me to do it? Uh, OK. If I have the expected value of a plus b squared, right? That's the, uh, And let's say there's zero means, so that this is the variance. Then this is the expected value of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So it's the expected value of a squared, which is the variance of a, plus the 2 times the expected value of a times b plus the expected value of b squared, right? But if they're independent, then what's this equal to? So this is 0. OK? So if you have independent random variables, their variance is add. So what's the variance of this thing? So what are the variances of the v's? So yeah, but what's the actual variance of v? 2 thirds. So it's going to be 2 thirds times what? Times n. OK? So the variance is monotonically increasing. So I'm going to need a little more space. What's the probability of xn equal m? What's the limit as n goes to infinity? The variance is going to infinity, right? So, so the probability, I mean, it's not a continuous distribution, but I'm going to draw it that way. So the distribution is like this, all right? This is n, this is um, the probability that x, OK, this is m, actually. xn equals m. As n gets larger, the distribution keeps getting wider and wider because the variance is going to infinity, right? The standard deviation is increasing as the square root of n. So what happens? But the area on this curve is constant, right? Because it's 1, the sum. So what happens to this limit as it goes to infinity? It's, it's got to equal 0 because Essentially what happens is that the, pro the states dissipate. They get spread over a wider and wider range of possible values. And 
in the limit, it goes to zero. So, okay, so the solution, okay, I'm running out of, okay, I've more, long since run out of time, but I'll just finish up. Okay, solution. I don't know if I'm gonna cover it because I'm kind of running out of time. I'm sorry, maybe I should have been more efficient. Um, solution, case one. Uh, you, um, you, okay, for case one, okay, require that Markov chain is air reducible. That's just a word, okay? So it's in order to guarantee that can't happen, you, it's enough to constrain the Markov chain to be irreducible. And that means that for all M, for all I and J, okay, uh, states I, J, and J communicate. Okay, which is to say that uh, there exists an N such that Pn of Ij is greater than zero. Okay, what does that mean? It means that given enough time, eventually there's a non-zero probability that I can get some state I to J. That's not true. These don't communicate. These two states do not communicate, okay? So if I guarantee, so, so the practical issue is this. If I want to prove that a Markov chain is ergodic, okay, then I, then I have to find, then I have to show that, that this state transition probability is greater than zero uh, uh, for, for some n. Okay, there exists an n such that it's greater than zero for all ij. You have to show you can get from every state to every other state, okay? Case two. For case two, uh, that's a little more complicated. It turns out that all states that, um, all states that communicate have to have the same, okay. You can define something called the period of the state. It's a little subtle, okay? Um, but it's the period of the clock I had here was three because every three clicks it repeated, okay? So that's the intuition. So it turns out if two states communicate, they must have the same period. So the first thing you do is you show that the thing's irreducible. Then you show that the period is one, okay? So it's not periodic. So all show all states are aperiodic to show that it's, it's so, so it's enough to show that PII I is greater than zero. So if there's a, it's enough to show if if uh, if the probability of staying in a, is staying in your state, not transitioning, is greater than zero, then you're good. Okay, then it's guaranteed. And in the clock example I gave you, that's that's like as if you broke the gears in the clock. So zero, one, two. So you have this, right? But if you have a small probability of staying in the same state, then the clock will lose its time. And then it's ergodic, okay? It's not, this, then it's no longer periodic. And then three, three is easy. Uh, M is less than infinity is good enough, okay? So in order to ensure that you can't just dissipate into infinity, just make sure you don't have an infinite number of states. So if you have a finite number of states, so, so a Markov chain will always be ergodic if it's homogeneous, a homogeneous Markov chain will always be ergodic if it 
if all the states communicate, any state is aperiodic. And to show that it's any state is peri any periodic is enough to show that one state you stay in, the, you have a probability of staying in the same state, which is greater than zero, okay? That's enough. It, it, you don't have to show that, but if that's true, you're good, okay? It's sufficient, but not necessary. And then for three, just ma make sure you have, don't have an infinite number of states. With those three conditions, then, then it's ergodic. And here's the big theorem. The limit as n goes to infinity of p infinity of pn, okay, the asymptotic distribution, well, I guess the way I could write it is like this. pn times tau is equal to pi infinity. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just call it pi. Uh, is the unique solution to the following equation. Pi times P equals pi. And this thing, these are called the full balance equations. These are full balance equations, which I sometimes write F, B, E. That looks like an eigenvalue problem where the eigenvalue is 1. So, so OK, so let me summarize. You're looking for the ergodic distribution of a Markov chain. Why? I don't know, but we'll come back to that later, OK? It turns out that it's useful. It's like solving a PDE. So, okay, the first question is, does it have ergodic distribution? And the answer is maybe not, because three things can go wrong. It can become a clock, it can be, irredu it can be reducible, or it can have its states dissipate into infinity. In order to ensure that those three things can't go wrong, there's lots of possible solutions, but three simple constraints that guarantee that those things can't happen are, you require that, it's, that all the states communicate. You require that any one state is aperiodic, and it's enough to show that you can stay in that state with pr probably greater than zero for one click, okay? And you constrain the number of states to be less than infinity. If you have those three things, you're guaranteed that it's ergodic. If it's ergodic, then there has to be a unique stationary distribution Okay, and to find that unique stationary distribution, you solve this equation. Which makes sense, because if you're in this distribution, you apply one click of the Markov chain, you stay in that distribution. Okay, now the problem is that solving the full balance equations can be extraordinarily difficult. If P is very large, like maybe P has you know, well, P can get to be ridiculously large, like, you know, exponentially large in terms of its actual number of states, so then it's that squared. So in practice, you can't really solve this equation, usually. But then they're going to turn out that they're simplifying cases in which we can solve it. And those are the ones that we'll talk about. The most important one is when the Markov chain is reversible. When it's reversible, it turns out that you can solve these equations really easily, okay? So I'll let you go. I'm sorry I kept you so far over. Uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, thanks. Bye.